Hi everyone, welcome to episode four of Personally Professional. Today we have Tara Melvin with us. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. Tara has been characterized as a creative entrepreneur, warrior, and the Olivia Pope of events. In 2004, Tara created Perfect Planning Events and Signature Concepts, LLC, an event planning and management company that offers a complete array of services to cover all facets of event planning for upscale weddings, social and corporate events from start to finish. Tara is active within the creative industry serving as founder and organizer of the Signature CEO Conference platform, founder and president, of the National Society of Black Wedding and Event Professionals, founder and mentor of the Executive Wedding Planner Mentor Program, member of the Washington Business Journal Book of Lists, former president of the Association of Wedding Professionals of Greater Washington, D.C. for five consecutive years, networking event organizer for Thursday Therapy Network, D.C., an industry professional, Tara has the esteemed reputation as an industry leader and innovator who exemplifies boldness to breaking boundaries, champions for the professional growth of others in the industry, and galvanizes to create a positive impact for the industry as a whole. Today, we are going to focus on Tara's new or the National Society of Black Wedding and Event Professionals. Um, hi, Tara. Hi, Susan. How are you? I am great. How are you today? I'm oh, pretty good. Can't complain. Good. Um, I was going to take a second um, now that we have you on. To read just a little bit from your official press release um, two days ago, correct, for the yes. National Society of Black Wedding Event Professionals. Um, so, for the first time in history, the wedding and events industry will be introduced to an association that represents black owned businesses and entities in the wedding and events planning industry. Um, it officially launched on June 16th and was officially incorporated as a 501c6 nonprofit national association on July 8th. Um, the, 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 sorry, the organization is a nonprofit national association. It represents black owned businesses in the wedding and event planning industry whose members underscore the importance of excellence and professionalism in business and adhere and support the rights and obligations outlined in the organization's code of ethics. And then I wanted to read your mission just to skip down. Um, the National Society of Black Wedding and Event Professionals is a working body seeking active and ongoing change through collective and individual efforts. We seek elite membership among Black wedding and event professionals who are dedicated to their craft and to their businesses, but who are also committed to the industry and its evolution. We seek to encourage our members to excel in their talent providing them with the resources and create resources that allow for unity within our communities. We seek to elevate business acumen through education, partnership, partnership business resources, financial scholarships for education, to yield financial support from within and outside the association with strategic partnerships, and to bring awareness to others of the multitude of black owned businesses within the wedding and events industry. So Tara, that is quite an accomplishment that um, that this organization is providing um, to the industry. So to start with, I'd love he I'd love to hear more about you and your role in the industry. Maybe a little bit about how you got started in events. Okay. Wonderful. Again, thank you, Susan, for having me on eventplanner.com. Thank you so much for highlighting uh, myself and the National Society of Black Wedding and Event Professionals. 
uh, a little bit about me. And I know we didn't come here to talk about me. We came to talk about the association. But just to highlight a little bit about me, I am originally from North Carolina. I am a Carolina girl. And I attended North Carolina a and State University, um, where I received my degree in um, business administration and marketing. Um, born and raised in North Carolina, but then migrated to the Washington DC metro area, where I had from the time I received my first job, I had always been in some type of sales or marketing role. And then as just a person, I've always been that person of my friends from the time I was breathing and could talk and walk, that person that was always wanting to have a party or a celebration. From the time that I was in grade school, my parents would come home and find like all these kids like under the garage, like where did they come from? Why are they here? Why is our food that is supposed to be in our refrigerator out here on this picnic table with these kids? We're not feeding the whole neighborhood. <laughs> um, so that was me, the girl in the neighborhood. And then, um, Fast forwarding, getting to college. I always tell people that my very first major event, my cousin and I, we grew up together, uh, same age, went to college together. And that was the same for both of our parents. So our parents were first cousins. They were best friends, same age and so forth. So we grew up together. We were like one big bonded uh, family. And so when it came time for us to graduate, I was like, we need to have a graduation party. And so he was like, well, who's going to plan it? I said, don't worry about it. I said, I got this. I said, he was in a fraternity. I was like, you get the guys to get here. I will get the girls. And his parents were very popular um, in Greensboro. Um, they also graduated from my from our alma mater, but they were very, very um, famous uh, within the Greensboro community because they owned a restaurant in the area. So everybody knew about them. So I was like, okay, the food is fine because I got that down with your dad. I'll go talk to your dad. He's gonna make sure that we have all the food we need. I, I was living in an apartment um, because where we went to school, it was actually in the hometown where they live. So he stayed at home. He didn't you know, live in an apartment or lived on campus. And so where I lived in my apartment, I was just like, I went to the office management. I told them I wanted to have a party. I made little notes, sent it to everybody that lived in my apartment complex community, letting them know, I need you all to clear these cars out because we're having a barbecue. If you want to come, you can come. And sure enough, we had over 150 people coming to this party. Oh no police got involved. The apartment people, the management never came. So I always tell people that's my first claim to fame event. And then, as I say, becoming an adult, and sometimes I don't feel like an adult, but uh, becoming an adult, I was still always that friend that if there was going to be an event, Tara was putting it together where it was 4th of July, somebody's birthday, whatever. I was the one planning it. But now since I have a business and I'm very busy, my <laughs> friends get on me because they're like, where are our events? Why are you always planning events for other people? Like what happened to us? So that's a little bit about me as far as like who I am and perfect planning events kind of grew out of that. And it actually grew out of me hosting a party at my home, a New Year's Eve party mm -hmm. where a friend of a friend came who was uninvited. I'm a big stickler about people coming that are not invited. And so they're like, oh my gosh, can you plan an event for me? And I just jokingly say, yes, I'm going to charge you because you came uninvited. That was just me being smart. And so my friend tapped me on the shoulder. It's like, you know what? I think they may be on to something. Let's, you know, I think you might want to put this into action. And of course, it was the holiday season. I was on a two week vacation from my job. I was like, okay, I got on a computer. And for the full two weeks, that's what I was doing, trying to figure out how to launch this event planning business. Oh and it arose from there. And my very first client was 
uh, one of my coworkers from that job. She knew that I was trying to open my event planning business and her husband was retiring from the postal service and she wanted to give him a party. And she's like, I don't want to plan it. She's like, you can do it. And so they were my very first clients. That is a good, that is a good story. How long did it take? To uh, so I've been doing this now for 16 years. 16. And I've all I've always been here in the Washington D.C. metro area. Okay. But we go we go wherever. But um, this is where the majority of my events are. Okay. And then real quickly, the signature uh, conference, the signature. Conference. Oh, yes. So and then also, um, I launched about six years ago the signature CEO conference. And that arose out of the fact that, you know, I was always going to conferences and with going to conferences, I always felt like I was still missing something. I walked away, I paid my, my money to attend a conference to learn something. And all I walked away was from learning from the speakers about how fabulous they were. And of course I knew you were fabulous because I came here to see what I could learn from you. Uh, but I never got that information. And uh, so another thing about going to conferences, there were not many conferences that were business focused. And for me, I really do believe that creative entrepreneurs, we're creative, it's, it's something that we're born with. It's something that comes naturally. Being a business owner is not something that comes naturally because who wants to crunch numbers all day? Who wants to know, you know, if you're getting a return on investment? Who wants to know about all these profit margins, contracts, and so forth? And so for me, those were the things that I wanted to learn to be a successful business owner. And so after contemplating time and time again, I was just like, you know what? Somebody needs to do this. Somebody needs to do this. I was like, wait a minute. I'm an event planner. I can do this. And so then it became the Signature CEO Conference. And again, go, 2021 will be the sixth year. Uh, we were supposed to this year have a big celebration for our fifth year. But Rona, that's what I call her, <laughs> uh, interrupted that. And so we had to do the conference virtually and praying that 2021, that we will be able to come together in person for right. an important experience. I certainly hope so. <laughs> All right. So for, you know, the, the big reason that we wanted to talk to you today, the National Society of Black Wedding and Event Professionals, you are the founder Um you know, how long have you been thinking of starting this organization? Well, oh my goodness. I've been a part of associations since I've been in this industry. And I feel that associations are definitely key to the development of anyone. White, Black, you know, it's the key that's going to help your business. And I, you know, went along with the the notion that it's okay, you know, the things that I see, it's okay. But I always felt like, wow, there should be an association where there are more people like me that I see in the room. And of course, with all these years gone by, you're always busy. Um, you always had that thought in your mind. You always like, oh my goodness, this is like one more thing that I need to do on top of the other 100 things that I'm already doing. <laughs> and I joked a few minutes ago about Rona just interrupting our lives, but Rona has been a curse and a blessing. And the blessing part of Rona is the fact that she gave me time to do this. And with the, the uprise of George Floyd and the unrest that's going on in our world these days, um, it came the time to say, you know what? Uh, this is a time that this needs to be done. And not only um, is that pressure of having equal opportunity, um, in our everyday walk of life, it is very live and vibrant in the wedding and event planning industry. And again, going back to going to so many association meetings, you know, networking events, 
um, I could count on my hand the number of people that look like me, the number of black people, because we were so limited as far as like being on the invite list, being accepted into these rooms. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to create an organization for my culture, for my people, where we're not here to segregate ourselves, to um, say that we're blocking all other cultures out. Now I'm creating a space where we can come together comfortably to elevate ourselves, to elevate in education, to elevate ourselves to the world, to say, hey, we exist. And I want it to feel like it is a home for black business owners to know that they have a space, a safe space to come to say, you know what? I have my family, they're gonna be here, we're gonna be one big unit. If there are questions that I need to know in the area of business, I have someone that I can trust and lean on. And the education portion that we're gonna be providing to our members is one of the key elements because I'm all about educating. And we've even started some of those series um, as of now. And so we're just gonna to continue to elevate and educate um, our, our members in our community. I love the way you talked about what your why, um, because I, I can hear people saying, well, there are associations, you know, why, why do you need to have one specifically for black wedding and event professionals? And I think you said it so perfectly just, just now about, you know, having a group, a family that, supports you and that really, you know, you feel welcome in. And I love the way you said that. I'm going to go back and write that down. And <laughs> um, looks like we might have a question. Oh, okay. it sounds, it looks like we might have an echo going on. Can you? Oh, have, I don't hear, hear an echo. I did a little earlier, but hopefully that is gone now. I don't notice it now. But thank you, Heidi, for letting us know that. <laughs> All right. Um, so what do you want people in the industry? Well, let me back up. What? Um, so this is a membership only group. Uh, what qualifications does a business need to have to become a member of the organization? Yes, yeah, so it is a membership-based organization. Uh, some of the pre-qualifications are is that you have to be one year in business, um, and then we have to see your credentials, um, and part of those credentials are um, making sure that your business is registered within your state, if you have a business license, um, your employee identification number, and then also to make sure that you have insurance. Uh, and we're putting those parameters in place because one, every business owner should have this. There are many businesses out there that are um, existing and they do not have these credentials. And um, it's not fair to say that you are putting in the, the work as those that are that are legitimizing themselves. And we want that because our website is not only for our members, but it will also be for consumers. It will be for other event professionals to come see who are members, see people within their region that they may want to reach out to. Or if you're a DC based business and you're saying, oh, you know what, I'm planning an event in New York. You know, who can I reach out to that has been vetted to say, this is a great person that I can reach out to and work with. So those are some of the things, the parameters that we do have in place for people um, that want to join. Um, and we have um, two types of membership, which is a business and also a peer membership. And our peer membership uh, represents those that are Black in the industry, but they may work for um, a hotelier or a, a large catering company, someone who is not black. 
but they want to be involved. Uh, so we're giving them that opportunity to be involved in the organization by coming along as a peer member. And then also we'll be launching our um, Allied Industry Council, where they're going to be helping us with our diversity and inclusion initiatives that we'll be putting in place. Uh, so we have a very extensive group. Uh, the first 100 members will be called our founding members. They will have that title for as long as they are members. Mm -hmm. And we're almost there. We have 12 spaces to uh, complete our 100 membership. So since we launched in June, this has all happened with that many members since June. That is very quick. I've been enjoying following and seeing those, uh, like on Instagram, the videos of the people and their uh, stories and why they're wanting you know why they've joined your organization so um as you guys uh, people listening you can see uh scrolling across the bottom of the screen uh the nsbwep facebook and instagram are both at nsbwep so go out there and follow them on facebook and instagram and and meet a lot of these great uh event professionals that are joining the organization and if you're not a member and you want to become a member, please, you know, reach out to us, um, gain as much information as you want. Most of the information is on our website, but if you want to talk with me or one of our board members, you know, feel free to reach out. Okay, cool. So um, what do you want people in the industry to know about um, the organization, the industry as a whole? like? Um, well, we want people to know that uh, Black event professionals, Black wedding professionals, they do exist. And that, you know, you have amongst you um, professionals that are very talented, very smart, that are out here doing such phenomenal work. And they're here to collaborate. Um, we want to be accessible to others. We want to be able to um, galvanize our thoughts, our talents with each other, and you know, just to be known within the industry. And I think that's one of the things that is lacking. We want to be known to our industry peers. We want to be known to the publications that are out there. We want to be known to the conferences um, and retreats that are out there to say, hey, Come to us. And this is one of the other things that's going to be great about our platform is that, again, we have some talented people uh, within our within our community is that a lot of these are speakers. And so we're going to create a speaker roster where if you're looking for speakers, come to our website, see who we have so that you can bring them onto your platform to speak also. Uh, we're also going to be offering scholarships to our members, um, scholarships for them to continue their educational plight. We're going to be offering scholarships to our speakers to help them with their travel arrangements, to get them to where they need to go um, to share their knowledge. So we're here to serve as, as an educational platform an extension of the industry to say, hey, we're here too, and we're here to, you know, uplift the industry as a whole and serve as a home for our own community. So um, will you have a, like a directory eventually of uh, people in the event industry um, across all uh, parts of the event industry that people can go to your site and find, a, you know, even like a DJ or a florist or a photographer or a planner um, to take part in, in events. Yes, we are in the process of uploading all of our members. Um, our tech person behind the scenes um, is definitely working on that vigorously, getting them up. We're getting the, profile, the lovely profile pictures of our members from them. And so, yes, you can go to our website. Um, it will be broken down by state. 
and then by uh, professional category. So that way you can find. Um, I was just doing a tally um, this morning. So we have people from California, the Caribbean, um, up and down the East Coast. We had someone from Nebraska. And I was like, whoa, Nebraska. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> you never heard? I was like, oh, they do events in, an, in Nebraska. So we have members from everywhere representing all professions from planners to cake bakers, entertainment, and the entertainment is DJs, live bins, rental companies, uh, the whole nine yards. We have um, people representing just about every type of profession in our industry. I think that is so fantastic. Do you see this going internationally or will it just be um, the United States or North America? So that is one of the things that our board is vigorously working on because we have figured out even getting people from the Caribbean who are excited about wanting to become members, that their process is totally different from ours. So it's researching and learning, you know, about how businesses are established in these different areas. And we have had people from, um, Nigeria, England, uh, and so forth, Dubai, reaching out to us asking how can they become members. So that is definitely one of the big tasks that our board will be working on to figure out, you know, because we don't want to make exceptions because we need to learn, you know, the processes of business establishments in other countries so that everybody will have an equal playing field as, as far as becoming members. But as soon as we figure that out, of course, we are definitely going to be having members throughout the U.S. and beyond. That's exciting. So I've been wanting to ask you, how did you bring your board of directors together? So um, all of the board of directors were definitely hand appointed by me. And as I was thinking about these different positions and who I wanted to bring into play, I also had to think about two people that I felt would be not 100% committed, but 110% committed to this. Because this is uh, putting together an association is not a small job. And I knew that I would not be able to do it by myself. And so I thought in my head long and hard as far as like who these people were, people that I could trust, people that I knew would want to roll up their sleeves. And then I reached out to them. And one of the things was, again, can you agree that you can put 110% of into this? And then two, do you believe in what it is that I'm trying to put together? And once they told me yes and yes, then we move forward. Okay. We move forward. We got together. We're one big happy family. We signed our uh, confidentiality agreements and we've been rocking and rolling and trying to, you know, create, you know, all these initiatives, create, um, things that are going to be beneficial for our members. So it's, 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 it's a job. It is a job. Uh, I can tell. Um, what are, you mentioned you've already had a couple of initiatives or uh, presentations for your members. What mm -hmm. have those, I mean, can I ask what of those? Sure. sure. Um, we oh, have okay. had um, someone from the Small Business and Development Center to come in and speak to our organization as, um, as far as why there are requirements of having to establish a business um, as far as having an EIN number, having, you know, uh, your certificate of um, your state certificate, the reasons for having insurance. Not everyone believes that they need to have insurance for their business. So we had someone talk on that. Um, we also had an attorney to come in to talk to us about the legalities of business and what it is that you need in order to run your business to the point that you are protecting your assets. Um, future things down the pike, uh, human resources related, um, the business of virtual events, because virtual events is not going anywhere. 
you know, <laughs> those types of things. So we have a full calendar. We do have a director of education and events. Um, this is Tiffany Chalk of Tiffany Chalk Events, who's based in the Delaware area. And she is the one that takes on that initiative as far as creating our uh, events and education calendar. Okay. Um, so as far as um, scholarships, will your members like apply for the scholarships that you're offering? Yes. So we're still working on uh, fine tuning that, but we will be giving away um, a set number of scholarships per year to our members uh, for them to attend conferences and in, in retreats or educational platforms in which we will be reaching out to um, providing a certain stipend to each individual. Um, well, not every member, but the members that do qualify and we will have a set number that we will be providing on a yearly basis. That That's a great opportunity. I get I'd love to hear that with the scholarships. Education is, is so important on all levels, not just on all students. levels. Yes. So that is really great. It sounds like our echo is back. I'm not quite sure if it's causing that. Um, oh, I don't hear anything on my side. Oh, good. I'm going to keep you talking. <laughs> So I just wanted to uh, say real quick, if anyone's uh, listening and you want to ask questions, uh, we're watching the comments and we'll be glad to um, uh, answer your question or Tara will probably need to answer your question. And also if anyone's watching that is interested in being a member of the National Society of Black Wedding and Event Planners, um, you can see the website and Facebook and Instagram and uh, information uh, scrolling across the bottom of the screen there. So um, I guess we've really uh, already talked about this. I mean, your goals for the organization. I don't know if there's anything else you wanna say about that. Well, as far as the goals that we have set for the organization, again, one is to have a robust organization of members representing all sectors of the industry, representing all regions across the United States, um, bringing these individuals together to, one, to be able to collaborate, um, to be able to have an educational um, community that they can rely on. We also want to be reaching out to other associations to see how we can partner with them on certain initiatives that affect the industry overall. We will be working on our diversity and inclusion initiatives. Uh, we will also be working on sponsorships. Um, so if you are a business owner, uh, corporate business, or just someone in the industry, we are looking to partner with you to be sponsors, to continue to uplift our organization. And those funds that you uh, donate to our organization are going right back to our members to help them, you know, to be sustainable in this industry. Um, and then uh, next year, again, hopefully in 2021, that we will be able to have an official launch party. We're having a virtual launch party for our members next week, which we are totally excited about. Um, but an in-person experience, um, that is something that we are also working on for 2021. And we're hoping that we can do it in the spring, <laughs> hopefully, 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 hopefully. But my overall goal is just to have this organization to serve as a purpose for our Black community that is not going to be something that's just going to be around for a year or two years. I want the legacy of this organization to continue long after I am gone and that people will find it invaluable to their livelihood of their businesses. Um. How do you see, well, how do I want to ask, I just wanted to ask, how can, um, besides the, you mentioned sponsorships going forward, how can the event industry support 
your organization as far as um, you know what what would you want to say to the event industry as far as your initiative and bringing recognition to all the talented black event professionals that are at work right now is there any special message you would like to give to them I would definitely like to say that, you know, one is to be open. You got to have the doors open for us to come in and to open up your invite list. Um, we are going to be here to serve as a vehicle of change. Um, if you don't know where to start, reach out to us. Reach out to NSBWEP. We are here. Our board is here with our sleeves rolled up to do the work. And we want you to work alongside us, whether it is to, again, collaborate with us um, as far as continuing our plight to educate our members, whether it is to make change in the industry as so that, you know, with these events that you have a diverse team working on events, that diverse business owners are being invited to networking events. We want to be able to not continue to have the conversation um, as far as like why black people aren't in the room and why black people aren't recognized. Um, and also with the media publications, um, the same thing to recognize. Uh, I know that a lot of people say that they don't see color. Um, and it is the reason why we're in this spot is because people say that they don't see color. If you saw color, then you would know that there was a problem. There is an imbalance um, in the industry. I always tell people that myself as a black person and even my friends that no matter what we do, whether it's within our profession, um, going to a networking event, the first thing that we do, we survey the room to see who is in the room that's going to be like us. And again, that is very few. You always walk away just knowing that, hey, it's just a couple of us in the room. And so we need for our counterparts to do the same thing, too, to open your eyes and survey the room and say, hmm, why is why this? Why is this? This is not a diverse group of individuals here. Let's do something about this. The next time we, you know, host an event, we need to make some phone calls and, and open up our invite list. And people always say that, you know, I have that black friend. Okay. If you have that black friend, then you need to be talking to that black friend to see who else black that they can invite and allow them to invite to help you to create a diverse uh, community uh, with events, uh, public publications, and so forth. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I know I want to ask, um, you know, what can eventplanner.com do? to be more supportive of black event professionals. Because I recognized, uh, you know, I recognized when, when everything happened with George Floyd that even though it hadn't been uh, intentional, you know, the number of black event professionals that I had featured compared to uh, white or other um, was a pretty significant significant, um, you know, discrepancy there. And so I did make the effort to reach out to, you know, I, to reach out to more professionals to make it more diverse. But I do honestly, you know, want to ask you what, do you have any suggestions of what we can do to help be more inclusive and one is that you started, and I want to thank you for inviting me on here and recognizing our association. Uh, to not only for you know eventliner.com, but others out there that want to know what can they do, is that just know that this is just not a one-time thing. This is not just something that you're going to do while the issues are in the news and when the issues in the news go away then you feel like okay i can stop doing this right. no this needs to be something that is done every day of your life 
It needs to be something that now is intentional to be aware of. And I would say that the temporary, if you do a temporary fix, um, that would be the worst damage and the most offensive thing that you can do to um, the Black community. So I would just say continue um, to do the things that you're doing now, uh, continue it on a daily basis and be intentional as far as what it is that you're doing. Well, thank you for that. So on that note, um, you know, maybe you can put a good word in for us to your board members and members, and we would love to interview or include um, anyone that's interested in, you know, sharing their voice on our platform um, through interviews, articles, and uh, these Facebook Lives, um, roundtable discussions. Um, you know, if you'd put in a good word for us, we would love to um, get connected. Yes, yes. And I will also add to that also as far as like what I, um, I just added as far as asking, you know, what is it that you can do? The other thing that you can do is advocate for us. Um, speak up when you see that your your counterparts are not being inclusive, not being diverse, or saying things that should not be said. Don't be afraid to correct. Don't be afraid to let them know that they are wrong, because that is one of, another way that creates this environment that we're in now. So don't be afraid to um, speak up um, to make change. Yes, I know that's super important. That's something mm -hmm. not always been the best at, but yeah. I, I am working on it. Don't, and yes, don't be afraid to um, open, open up, uh, let your voices be heard, let people know when they are wrong. And, you know, because it, for the change, it's going to take all of us um, to make that change. Yes, definitely. So, and I'm sure that all of our members are watching and, you know, will be ready to jump on to eventplanner.com to be interviewed to talk about their businesses. I hope so. I welcome. I welcome. I love um, seeing people's stories about how they've grown their businesses and uh, the entrepreneurship and the, the talent. Um that's one of the most fun things about this job besides meeting new people is just the inspiration I get from the way that, you know, you all have built your careers. I, I'm, it, it's a huge inspiration for what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else that you would like to add about the organization about, um, uh, Anything that's going on in the industry right now that you would like to talk about or? Well, it's very quiet in the industry, <laughs> in some ways quiet in our industry, but loud in our industry, of course, right now, um, events that we love doing, love celebrating are basically at a halt right now. But um, just reach out to your event partners, see if they're okay you know, just touch base with them because, you know, this um, is a taxing time uh, for all of us, not only for to have Corona to just like knock us completely out to the point of um, the systemic racism that's going on. Um, it, it's a lot. It is a lot. And so I would just say, just reach out to your vendor partners to let them know that see if they're okay. Um, because, you know, sometimes depression is not something that's going to be obvious. And right. just that whole little phone call just to say, hey, I'm just calling to see how you're doing. Well, you just don't know how that may lift someone up. And as far as um, NSB, WEP, we're can you continue to grow every oh, single oh, day. Sorry, sorry. And every day, you know, our... Um, our inbox of applications keep coming and we're so excited about that. We're so excited about our members. 
uh, we're really going to be excited when we can actually meet all our members face to face. But to our members, just know that your board members are working hard and diligently behind the scenes uh, to make sure that, you know, you have a robust uh, organization that's standing behind you. I'm thinking that's going to be some party next year. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're gonna, gonna, I think we're going to be partying just because Corona is going to be gone. Oh, oh, no kidding. There's so many. Hopefully, there will even be more reasons. So, yes, yes, um, yes. But that's, that must, that, all of you event professionals coming together into a big gathering. It's be one big massive party. <laughs> it sounds fun. Um, well, it has been really awesome to meet you, Tara. I wanted to give Sarah Nickens a quick shout out and thank her for connecting us and making it possible for us to talk today. today. And um, yes, uh, Sarah is our director of operations. So she serves on the board and um, I must shout out the rest of my board members. We have Mr. Brian Green of by Brian Green out of Atlanta. He is the chairman of the board. My vice chairman is uh, Mark, um, who is of the style Mark, Mark Wilson of the style Mark. Um, we have Tiffany Chalk, who is the director of events of Tiffany Chalk Events. We have Mr. Chip Desard, who is our director of marketing and communications. We have Nadia Anderson, who is our director of finance. And we have our uh, director of membership, Ms. Um, Addie Adebola. And then we have... Um, Director of Communities, Ms. <laughs> Alana Walker of Alana Walker Events. And I think I got them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations to all of you for uh, create, you know, bringing this organization together. And I'm excited to see you move forward and, and what you bring to the industry. Thank you. Your support is greatly appreciated. You're very welcome. And it was really great talking with you today. I hope we can stay connected. Yes. And uh, I hope you have uh, a great afternoon. Same to you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Tara. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.